good morning. We are here to talk about property taxes. Um, we are be standing behind um, Harrison Street Playground, which is actually a playground that is near and dear to my heart, which is where I take my daughter. Uh, she plays on those swing sets and uh, on the slide. Uh, and that's not just symbolic, it's because people move to villages like Croton and communities like we have throughout the Hudson Valley because of our playgrounds, our parks, our communities, our schools. And how do we make our communities continue to be affordable for middle class families is by far the defining issue of my race and I would suggest of the state right now. You know, this region has been a place where a lot of folks have raised tremendous families, but they're feeling the pressures. And I hear that every day on the campaign trail, people telling me, yes, I, my grandparents grew up here, my parents grew up here, I'm raising my kids, but I'm gonna have to go to the Carolinas. I'm gonna have to go to Florida because, it get, because it's becoming unaffordable to live here. We have to address that and property taxes are certainly at the core of that issue. Um, I'm really pleased to be with Linda and Catherine. Um, these are two folks who at various levels of government have fought hard to keep property taxes and costs at a reasonable level for middle class families. And they've worked really hard and they've been able to do it in Austin and Portland. Um, but part of my message is it shouldn't be that hard. The state needs to provide them some relief. The real driver of property taxes has nothing to do with our local governments not working hard enough or cutting enough corners. The real issue, the real issue in this state, in this region when it comes to property taxes is unfunded mandates. And we need to get Albany off the back of local governments. And every couple of years you hear state legislative candidates say, we got to lower your taxes, we're going to lower your taxes. But they never seem, and by the way, Democrats and Republicans alike, to actually tell you how they're going to do it. So we're going to take the bold step of actually proposing some things on major cost drivers. These are not little things, these are big ticket items that really could change the equation. So, just a couple points about the actual problem. In Westchester County, 40% of the Westchester County budget is eaten up by Medicaid, a program that is a federal and state program. It has nothing to do with county government. At the local level, Linda talked about the pension spikes that often towns, uh, towns experience. In Peekskill, which is in my district, just in 2012, they had to lay off close to 40 workers because of pension spikes that had to do with the stock market, nothing to do with the administration of the city. Not to mention, our school districts are saddled every year by new unfunded mandates. The state has a lot of good ideas, but they don't pay for them, and we need to stop that. What I'm here to say is that the state needs to stop using our local governments and our county government as a piggy bank, and we're going to talk about that specifically. So, first point, and I think this is the lowest hanging fruit, has to do with Medicaid. New York is one of the few states in the country that actually administers Medicaid on a county by county level. We have 62 different county systems when it comes to Medicaid. Broome County, Oswego County, Westchester County. That's incredibly inefficient. Other states consolidate that at the state level. We can save money and provide better services. So that's point one. And I think that would allow county governments to refund that money that they're now using to pay for Medicaid to reduce property taxes. And that's what mandates are about. It's a wonky word, but what it really means is putting money back into local governments so they can make sure that taxpayers have relief. The second piece has to do with pension spikes. Um, our pension system here in New York is actually doing quite well. You can check out uh, uh, Comptroller DiNapoli's website. He's doing a good job managing our money and, and pensioners are safe and secure in their pensions. But what is not fair, and, and Linda alluded to, is that local governments often have to pick up the contribution level when pensions drop due to stock market volatility. That's the one downside of a pension system is that it's heavily reliant on the stock market. So, how do we address that in a way that's fair, that doesn't reduce benefits? We do that by having a pension cap of 2%. This is the bill that Senator Latimer has already proposed. He needs more support in the state Senate to get it passed. It would cap the growth uh, of pension contributions for towns and municipalities at 2%. Um, this would allow towns to budget appropriately and not get hit with these double-digit increases that cause mass layoffs and chaos at the local level. The third piece of the plan, and, and you know, those two pieces address major cost drivers that we have right now, but the third piece of the plan is probably the most important, and that's to stop unfunded mandates going forward. Uh, Senator Gibson in Poughkeepsie, uh, a Democrat and an Assemblyman uh, from uh, Dutchess County as well, Karen Lowler, have a proposal to amend the New York State Constitution to ban, un to ban unfunded mandates here in New York. I'm coming out to support that constitutional amendment. It is a dramatic step but we need to get Albany off the back of our local governments. And so what this constitutional amendment would say, quite simply, if Albany has a good idea, Albany should pay for it. And I think that's a principle that we should 
we should abide by in state government. Again, local governments are not piggy banks for state legislators. If we have good ideas, we'll find ways to fund them or we won't do them. That's what people who responsibly budget in their private life do, in the private sector do, that's what the town governments and the county governments do. It's time for the state to join uh, and get on board. Uh, in conclusion, I would just say, you know, for years we've had a bipartisan consensus in Albany that it's okay to pass down costs uh, to local governments. I'm not part of that old guard that's been doing that. I'm not in politics now, but with the help of the voters of the 40th District, I look forward to rolling up my sleeves and actually reducing property taxes. The property tax cap is a great start, but capping taxes isn't enough. We have to find ways to allow municipalities and local governments to actually lower taxes. Uh, and that's my goal, and that's what we'll be talking about in this campaign. So thank you for coming, and uh, look forward to talking about this for the next, what do we have, 100 days. <laughs>